Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the new Selkirk S1 pickleballs. So I got a four pack. That's what I did. Um, Selkirk typically runs on the more expensive side of things. I have two of them with me right here. The other two are currently in my bag. Um, I did get the chance to hit with them a couple of weeks ago for about probably like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Then I did so again last week and I've been mixing them in every once in a while. It hits when people hit with them. It is the winter time here in New England, and unfortunately, the S1 is a darker ball than the typical uh, ball we use here, the Franklin, for comparison. See how the Franklin looks a lot brighter than the S1, and we being primarily indoors, darker is not the greatest thing for indoors, so people usually ask after about half an hour to switch the, to the Franklin, from my experience, but Everyone, it's it's never been about the performance of the S1 ball. It's been more about the color. So Selkirk, if you're listening to this, let's brighten this ball up. Let's make it look like this Franklin right here that's lightly used. And let's make it so it's more visible indoors, please. Other than that, I absolutely love this ball. I, I've found, um, there you go, it even says Pro S1 right there. And then it says Selkirk right there. Fun, huh? I personally absolutely love it. I'm into the slower balls. I'm not really a huge Dura fan. I just find the Duras warp and crack extremely fast, and they're extremely expensive, and I, I don't have that kind of money, guys. <laughs> like, um. Whereas the Franklins right now, I've always said, are the best value for your buck for a tournament-ready ball. I think there's plenty of other ball brands out there, but people are very picky with the ball they use. I don't know why. That's not a thing. In, like, in tennis, that was not a thing. Like, dude, half the time I hit the tennis balls that were in my bag because they're the balls I had. You know, I wasn't, like, buying a spe specific brand by any means. Um but there was a couple brands that, you know, the tournaments would use over others. It seems like in pickleball, whatever the tours are using is what people want to use. And if the tours aren't using it, it's whatever the local tournaments are using, people want to use. And it seems very tournament emphasized on that, which I don't have an issue with being, you know, someone that plays a fair amount of tournaments myself. But I feel like for a practice once in a while, guys. Toss a different ball in there. Toss a different paddle in there once in a while. See what happens. You'd be surprised. Jim and I literally did a wood paddle review a couple of weeks ago, and we did a lot better than we expected in the game we played with the wood paddles. Given it's not my paddle of choice by any means, I did not enjoy it. But it was pretty funny and fun to see, you know, us going, you know, whatever, 11-8, 11-9 with a, with a good team. Like using a piece of wood and then using like thermoform paddles. So it goes to show you equipment is not necessarily everything in the pickleball space. It does matter though. Um, but anyways, back to the ball. What I want to talk about with this ball is the fact that we finally have a ball that's durable. So I have tried, like legitimately tried to crack some of these and I can't do it. If I try to crack a Franklin, eventually I can do it. It's not like a Dura where it's going to crack just from regular use right away, but it'll crack over time from use, from playing, from hard hitting, so on and so forth. Or it'll decompress, or it'll deform, or whatever else is the bazillions of other things that happens to these balls. As for the S1... The only issues I've noticed with it is they go out of round, but then they like come back into round. I don't really know how to explain it, but the S1, like, it almost looks like it's a little bit like dented. Like here, I'm I'm squeezing this hard. It's not budging. I squeeze this Franklin and you can see 
and pressing into it there and you can start to feel it like deform and so i think that this is a lot better made the s1 also hence the selkirk price tag on it but you know it's got a one-year warranty no crack warranty I've heard there's some stipulations and yada yada, and you got to keep the receipt you get the balls with and register them online. I'm sure that Selkirk's just covering their butts so they're not giving out free free balls for an entire year. But look, if the idea is you only buy four of these and that's your balls for the year, that's pretty good, in my opinion, as opposed to buying, I don't know, I'd probably buy 100 Franklins, like once twice a year i mean lately i've been doing the 36 pack instead so i probably buy three 36 packs and that's like a year just because it's better priced um yeah i mean look again i actually really like the franklin ball in general i don't have a lot of grimes with it but for this review i will say right now that i think the s1 selkirk ball is the best ball on the market Apparently, Vulcan is coming out with a ball now that the PPA Tour has quote-unquote signed with, according to some of the news that's going around right now in the pickleball space. But it wouldn't surprise me if these guys came back in and we see people playing these, even if it's just on the local level, on the tournament level. I think it's a great ball. I think this is going to save a lot of people a lot of money because you're not buying as many balls to hit with. So, personally, I would give this ball like an 8 or 9 out of 10. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is I think the price is a little high, personally. I'm I'm very big on affordable things when it comes to sports in general. That's just how I morally look at it and how I was raised. I don't think you need to be spending the amount you would spend on whatever say 31 or 36 or 100 Selkirk balls. I think it could be a little cheaper, but other than that, absolutely love the ball. Really don't have any complaints other than the color. Again, here's the comparison. As you can see, the Franklin is significantly brighter and this isn't even like the op the there's a brighter Franklin than this. This is just the regular greenish yellow Franklin that everyone uses. I know um, the Pro Tour, they use the yellow, yellow one when they use the Franklin, so it's a little different. But yeah, as you can see, the S1 is just darker. It just really needs the color to be brightened up. Again, for comparison, two S1s to a Franklin. But other than that, yeah. And that's my half of the review, everybody. Now I kick it to my good friend and partner, Jimmy Pickles, for his half on the Selkirk S1 ball. Greetings, fellow pickleballers. Jimmy Pickles here. Today I'm going to talk about a um, probably a, not a very often discussed topic, but um, we're going to talk about balls, uh, pickleballs to be specific. Um, so anyway, Selkirk, got a cool hat from Selkirk. It's, um, one of the reasons why I buy a paddle is if they have a free giveaway, like a hat. Um, so a long time ago, I bought a Selkirk paddle, they gave me a hat. Pretty cool. But anyway, uh, back to the balls. So um, Selkirk came out with a ball, the S1. It's supposed to be indestructible or something along those lines. Um, so we uh, we got some, uh, D-Dog and I, and we played with some um, for a couple of sessions. And uh, honestly, we haven't been able to break it yet. I mean, other than like I ran my truck over it and that broke it. But other than like just playing with the ball, it doesn't break. So we're going to do a little comparison. So I've got, you know, the S1. I've got the uh, the old Onyx, not old, but an Onyx ball. Um, and then I've got uh, the uh, the Franklin ball, which is what typically we would use. So um, I like to test balls by having uh, see my dog's reaction. Um, and if they get excited, then it's a good ball. If it's, if they don't, then it's a bad ball. So if you hear some barking, that'll be my dogs, um, Nasty and Nelson. So, um, you ready? Here we go. Here is the, this is the S1 ball from Selkirk. 
All right, let's see how it goes. Okay, so that was nasty. Um, he likes the S1 ball. Let's see how he does with the, uh, with the Franklin ball. Apparently Nasty doesn't like the Franklin ball, which is kind of surprising because he used to. Maybe he likes the S1 better and he's trying to let me know. Let's see how he does with the Onyx ball. You ready, boy? There you have it. Nasty approved S1 Selkirk ball indestructible unless you drive your jeep over it um buy some you know they're a little more expensive but if they're indestructible it's better than playing three or four games with a ball that cracks uh and and in most cases affects my shot and causes me to lose a point so i'm all for the s1 ball jimmy pickles out So where does this leave the S1 in today's ball market? Well, in today's ball market, the Vulcan is now the official ball of the PPA for 2024. And the Owl Ball, the Quiet Paddle Company Owl, is the official ball of the APP for 2024. So if you intend on playing tournaments on those tours... You will most likely need to buy and practice and adjust to those balls. Um, historically, at least in New England, the Franklin X40 has kind of been the way of law. That's just what we play indoors, outdoors, all that. The only time we really stray away from that is when it drops below like 50, 45, and they just crack like crazy just from it being cold out um and then we'll typically go to it was usually this yellow or like yeah this yellow onyx ball uh, it might have been the onyx infuse i don't know the name off of my head um historically it was the winter ball we'd use and my personal belief is that this L s1 selkirk ball could now be that we did test it outside in sub 40 degree weather and it never cracked for me. Um, you know, and the nice thing about it is you just get a four pack and hopefully that lasts you the entire winter as opposed to getting a bunch of different random balls that you're only going to use in one season. Um, and yeah, so I think that's where that leaves the ball, at least for the new England market. Um, in terms of the Dura, I know that the Dura is now not on either of the tours as the ball. Um, I don't know where it will stand for the tournament scene for 2024, but currently, at least in New England, we really only use Duras as you know a one-off or historically it was to prep for APPs or PPAs, um, but now that that's not a thing, I don't think there will be many Duras out there in rotation in here in new england um as for other parts i can't speak to only time will tell um at the time of recording this it is january 2024 so there's definitely a lot that could still happen in the ball market but it seems like the s1 could have a place as a niche all-weather indestructible ball which I think is good. I, I think the market needs something like this and we need something that we can use when the weather's cold out, quite frankly, without cracking a sleeve of balls. So yeah. All right, guys. Well, this is Jim and I's review of the Selkirk S1 ball. We both really liked it. Um, and yeah, highly recommend if you're looking for that winter ball or you're looking for that indestructible year-round ball, go grab a four-pack. All right? We'll see you.